Chromosomes. Chromosomes are nuclear structures composed of DNA and protein. Eukaryotic and prokaryotic genomes. Eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes do not. DNA of eukaryotic cells are contained within a nucleus. Mitochondria and chloroplasts also have DNA essential to their functions. Prokaryotic DNA is contained within a nucleoid, which is not a membrane-bound organelle. Organization of DNA in the cell. DNA is highly organized into chromosomes within cells. Here we see DNA strand. You can see the base pairing AT GC. This winds to form a double helix. This binds proteins to form what's known as nucleosomes. It further winds and condenses to form chromatin, ultimately forming the chromosome that we're familiar with, and it's in the cell's nucleus. Chromosome in the cell. Prokaryotic chromosome are circular DNA and the cell has no distinct nucleus. They're folded and packed. This is a schematic of a prokaryotic cell. The eukaryotic chromosome consists of linear DNA and have defined structures inside the nucleus. Linear DNA molecules are folded and packed within the eukaryotic cell's nucleus. Bacterial chromosomes. These pictures show the circular chromosome of a bacteria. In each picture, the DNA becomes more twisted into what is called a superhelical turn. This is an example of in vivo organization. Loops of DNA are attached to a base in an unknown mechanism. Virus chromosome. The viral genome can be either DNA or RNA. This is a schematic of a DNA tumor virus. HIV, it's an RNA virus. The DNA or RNA can be a single molecule or multiple molecules. The DNA or RNA can be circular or linear. Bacteriophage lambda chromosome. Bacteriophage are viruses that only infect bacteria. Bacteriophage lambda has an important role in genetic research. Bacteriophage lambda consists of a linear double-stranded DNA molecule, the ends of which are sticky. The entire genome can be incorporated into the bacterial chromosome. Let's take a look at phage lambda chromosome. Sticky, the end can match the other end. The sticky ends fold back into a circular form. These can then integrate into the E. coli chromosome. Chromosome structure. Chromosomes are in the nucleus of each cell. Chromosomes consist of DNA coiled many times around proteins, called histones, that stabilize their structure. Chromosomes have centromeres, which are points at which they constrict and divides the chromosome into two sections, or arms. The short arm is labeled the P arm and the long arm Q. Centromere location gives the chromosome its characteristic shape. Notice here in this picture where the histone proteins wrap and align themselves with the DNA molecule. This is also often referred to as beads or pearls on a string. Chromosome anatomy. Chromatin is the general structure of any chromosome. The basic units are nucleosomes. It also refers to the extended form of a chromosome, 
e.g. in interphase. This is one duplicated chromosome. Here is a blow-up region of the chromatin. Chromatid, one half of a replicated chromosome. Notice this box. This is a chromatid. Chromosome is the unit of inheritance with the basic structure of arms, centromere, and telomeres. Eukaryotic cells and chromosomes. Eukaryotic chromosomes are paired structures composed of DNA and proteins. Two cell types exist in eukaryotes, gametes, reproductive cells, and somatic, all other cells. Somatic or autosomal cell is shown here, while gametes include the ovum, also known as the egg, or spermatozoan. In humans, every somatic cell has a diploid full set of the organism's chromosomes, while gametes have a haploid number. In humans, the diploid number is 46. The haploid number is 23. Human somatic cells have 46 chromosomes, 22 paired autosomes, and one pair of sex chromosomes, that is, X or Y chromosomes. Chemical composition. Four bases make up DNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. A, that is adenine, only pairs with T, thymine, and G, guanine, only pairs with C, cytosine, in DNA. Additionally, DNA has a phosphate backbone. This allows for all the bases, that is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, to be positioned internally. The building blocks of DNA. Let's take a look at the components of DNA. It's made up of a deoxyribose, a base, and a phosphate. Notice here that a nucleoside consists of the base and the sugar, not the phosphate. This is important to remember, so a nucleoside does not contain the phosphates. Here, the nucleotide monophosphate in this case has the phosphate, so note the difference between the nucleoside and the nucleotide. The nitrogenous base the nitrogenous base is adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine. It attaches to the sugar, that is the deoxyribose, in this position. This is a glycosidic bond between the sugar and the nitrogenous base. Phosphate base plus the deoxyribose plus the nitrogenous base equals deoxyribonucleic acid. Putting the DNA blocks together. The phosphodiester bond links nucleotides together in one strand. Here we have the phosphate groups. The nitrogenous bases, which are the adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. The deoxyribose, remember this is the sugar moiety. DNA nucleotides are linked at their phosphate groups in a phosphodiester bond. Notice the phosphate bonds are formed at the 5' prime and 3' prime positions. DNA and hydrogen bonding. DNA nucleotides exhibit hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds are attractive forces between an electronegative atom and a hydrogen atom bonded to another electronegative atom. DNA nucleotides exhibit hydrogen bonding. Notice hydrogen are on the NH groups and attracted to doubly bonded oxygen and nitrogen. Take a moment to look at the hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine. Notice that guanine and cytosine has three hydrogen bonds. 
DNA double helix. The DNA double helix is approximately 2 nanometers in diameter and the strands are anti-parallel. The base pairing is internal. The sugar phosphate makes up the backbones, shown here with the red knobs. Hydrogen bonds occur between the base pairs. There's an enormous number of hydrogen bonds between the base pairs holding these anti-parallel strands together. Also, the DNA double helix consists of a major groove and a minor groove. One turn of the double helix equals 10 base pairs, approximately 3.4 nanometers. DNA chemistry and biophysics. The maximum absorbance of DNA is at 260 nanometers, as you can see here on this graph where absorption versus wavelengths is plotted. Notice the peak of this curve is approximately at 260 nanometers. The melting temperature of DNA is the temperature at which the double-stranded DNA melts, forming two single strands. The Tm is the temperature when 50% of the double strands are unwound. GC pairs have three hydrogen bonds and AT pairs have two. A high GC percentage leads to a high Tm. DNA hybridization. DNA can be melted or denatured by heat, pH, and chemical mechanisms. Upon denaturation, the absorbance at 260 nanometers increases. Two strands of DNA can rejoin and is called renaturing. Matching complementary sequences will renature even if the entire strand is not complementary.